Dear students, now we are going to discuss about helium neon laser. So for better understanding, please watch the previous videos. Right? Let us get into the video now. So helium neon laser, what is the introduction part and how it is constructed and how it is working and what are the characteristics of helium laser. So one by one we are going to discuss it's helium neon. Both are the gas, right? So this is the gas laser. So let us discuss the introduction part. So already I mentioned helium and neon are the gas. So helium neon laser is a gas laser. Already in Ruby we have discussed it is a solid state laser. But here the gas laser. The active medium is gas here. That's what it is called gas laser. And this laser was discovered by Ali Jawan. Ali Jawan. He is an USA scientist. USA scientist. He designed, he developed this laser, helium neon laser to give the continuous output, to get the continuous output. So already we have discussed the disadvantage of ruby laser in the previous video. It produced the pulsed laser. It produced the pulsed one. It, it won't be the continuous. But now he, that means Ali Jawan developed this helium neon laser to give the continuous laser. Okay, that is the advantage of this helium neon laser. Okay, so this is what the small introduction about this helium neon. You may have the doubt that why helium and neon are combined. Why not the other gases? Why? Because the helium and neon are having the closed energy levels. Dis while discussing in this working part of this laser, you can understand why these two are chosen to produce the laser light. Okay, so now we will go to the construction part. So this is the construction part. So now this tube is there. No, this tube is called gas discharge tube. What is the name of this tube? Gas discharge tube. This tube is made up of quartz material. It's made up of quartz material. This tube is made up of quartz material. So inside the uh, tube only, they have taken the mixture of helium and neon in the ratio of 10 is to 1. So the mixture they have taken, mixture of helium and neon which is in the ratio of 10 is to 1. So from this what we can understand the number of helium atom is greater than the number of neon atoms and the another thing is the helium is kept under 1 mm of mercury. 1 mm of mercury which is represented as Hg and the neon is kept under the pressure of 0.1 mm of mercury. Okay. 0.1 m of mercury so helium is more in number and the pressure is also more for that one mm of mercury and the neon is less and the neon atoms is less and then it's pressure is also 0.1 mm of mercury okay so this gas mixture is kept inside the gas discharge tube which is made up of quartz material and then so these are the electrodes can you able to see this this design is the electrode so this uh, electrodes are fixed at the ends of the discharge tube and then this electrodes are connected to the radio frequency oscillator which is connected to the radio frequency oscillator to produce the electrical discharge that means it produces the electrons uh, fast moving electrons it produces the fast moving electrons that electron will pass through this gas okay this is, so that we can say electrical discharge will takes place here okay and then see here this is another setup different setup has made in this not it is not there in the ruby laser but here one different setup is there that means the end phase of this discharge tube are tilted okay up to certain angle so this angle is called Brewster angle. What is the name of this angle? Brewster angle and the setup. Both the sides we are having. Okay. So this setup is called Brewster window setup. This setup is called Brewster window. The angle is called Brewster angle and this setup is called Brewster window. Why it is done like that means to produce the plane polarized light. Polarized light means its vibration will be oriented to one direction okay plain polarized laser will be produced this is one special design they made okay so the end of this gas discharge tube is tilted to certain angle that is the Brewster angle and the setup is called Brewster window why because to produce the plain polarized laser that means the all the light will be directed towards one direction okay this is the polarized light okay and then this is the 
optical resonator setup. So here we have taken two mirrors M1 and M2. So already we know that M1 is fully reflecting, fully reflecting. Actually here they have taken concave mirror. Okay, concave mirror. So the shape of the mirror will be like this, concave shape. Okay, and here also it is partially reflecting concave mirror. So two mirrors, two mirror concave mirrors they have taken. One is fully reflecting and another one is partially reflecting. So through this partially reflecting, the laser light will come out. Okay, so this is what this M1 and M2 set up the optical resonator. Okay, so this is what the experimental construction part of this helium neon laser. Once again, I will repeat, listen carefully. So this tube is the gas discharge tube, which is made up of the quartz material. Inside, they filled the mixture of helium neon in the ratio of 10 is to 1. So the number of helium atom is more than the number of neon atoms. And moreover, helium is having the pressure of 1 mm of mercury and the neon is kept under the pressure of 0.1 mm of mercury. And then the end of this, that means the side phase of this discharge tube is connected to the radio frequency oscillator so that to produce the highly accelerated electrons. So the electrons, this highly accelerated electron only going to give the energy to helium and neon atoms to excite to the to go to the excited state okay so the excitation can be done by electrons here that we have to remember okay and then the side is end of this uh, discharge tube is tilted to set a brewster angle and the setup is called a brewster window setup so that it produce the plane polarized light okay that means the light is uh, oriented in one direction and then two mirrors they used for the optical resonator setup that is one is m1 which is fully reflecting concave mirror and then m2 is the partially reflecting concave mirror so through this partially reflecting concave mirror the laser light will be produced its wavelength is lambda is equal to 6328 angstrom which is also related to red color so red color laser is produced in this case okay so this is what the construction part of this ruby sorry construction part of helium neon laser so next we are going to discuss about how the helium neon laser is working so now i have drawn this diagram let me explain one by one so here two atoms are there one is helium atom and another one is the neon atom helium atom and a neon atom so what is the active medium i said gas medium that is the mixture of helium and neon but who is going to produce the laser light by seeing the diagram you can understand only neon atom so the neon atom is the active center okay active medium means which medium laser is produced and who is responsible for production of laser neon atom so neon atom is the active center okay and then here two atoms i mentioned that is what for helium atom i have given the energy level is f1 f2 f3 if i use both e1 and e2 means you will get the confusion that is the reason two different energy uh, names i have taken so for helium atoms the ground state energy is f1 and the excited state energies are f2 and f3 right and then here come to the neon atoms neon atoms are having this many energy levels e1 e2 e3 e4 e5 e6 okay and then already i said why this helium and neon atoms are combined to produce the laser why because see here f2 of helium atom and e4 or neon atom are same the energy levels are same and then f3 and e6 i can write here f2 of helium is same for e4 of neon atom and f3 of helium atom is related to e6 energy level of this neon atom so these two are having the close energy levels that is the reason these two atoms are combined together to produce the laser light okay so now let me explain the working part of this helium neon laser so based on the energy only we have drawn this diagram so f1 is the lower energy f2 f3 are the excited energies right so once the radio frequency oscillator is switched on so by electrical discharge in a gas tube the ground state helium atoms are excited to the higher energy levels so it is going to f2 and f3 okay so the excitation how the excitation takes place the fast moving electrons collide with the helium atoms collide with the helium atoms so that that the fast moving electron transfer its energy to the helium atom so this is due to the collision of discharge electrons with the helium atoms right and then excited helium atom 
equalized inelastically that is very important inelastically what is the meaning of inelastically totally it transfer its energy to the neon atom actually the atoms will be there in the ground state only but this f2 atom is there no f2 of helium atom directly transfers its energy to the neon atom to come to the e4 state to come to the e4 state so it is transferring its energy inelastically the process is called resonant collision energy transfer so it directly transfers its energy to the at neon atoms directly it will come to the e4 the same thing those atoms in the f3 also transfers its energy to the neon atom and this neon atom directly occupy the e6 now directly occupy the e6 okay so then so now it transfers its energy the process is called resonant collision energy transfer okay this a resonant this resonant energy transfer takes place because the corresponding energy levels of helium and neon already i said helium and neon are having the closed energy levels this two energy levels that is the reason this phenomenon takes place in this case of helium neon laser right so the prob now you may have the doubt why the electron Uh, neon will not transfer the energy to helium why not it takes place means already i mentioned the ratio is 10 is to 1 more number of helium atom will be present than the neon atom and another one is helium is having the pressure 1 mm and the neon is having the pressure 0.1 mm so definitely this kind of reverse will not takes place only helium transfers its energy to the neon so this is one important thing you have to remember and uh, some of the atoms are de excited so after tra transferring the energy this atoms will be de excited and then it will come back to the ground state again it will be collided with the fast moving electrons so this process will be continued over here okay and in, now come to this neon atom so now directly the neon atom gains energy and occupies this e4 and e6 right so next step what will happen now listen carefully in this energy states three transition is very very important so let me explain one by one first transition is e6 to e5 okay so i will uh, write here the first transition is e6 to e5 so how much in the wavelength i have written you see 3.39 micrometer micro means 10 power minus 6 if we write in the angstrom it will be 3391 angstroms so see 33000 actually visible range of the light is 4000 to 7000 only visible only that that range only we can able to see but it is beyond the range so it produces a radiation in ir region infrared region so e6 to e5 when the atom transfers it takes the transition by the time it produces the wavelength of 3.39 micrometer or 33912 angstroms so which lies in the ir region of radiation right this is the first transition this is the first transition and the second transition is listen carefully e4 to e3 okay the what is the second transition e4 to e3 during this time also same thing here it produces the wavelength of 1.15 micrometer or otherwise we can write 11523 angstroms so it is around 11000 angstrom so which is also lies in the ir region of infrared radiation only this is the the second transition and the main transition is the third transition is e6 to e3 this one e6 to e3 this part so during this transition only it produces the wavelength of laser lambda is equal to 6328 angstroms 6328 angstroms so now e6 to e3 e6 to e3 it uh, reaches that a population inversion condition and then here the transition takes place between this and the wavelength is 6328 angstroms which is also red in color okay so this transition is very important after that so due to the spontaneous emission once the lifetime is over 10 power minus 8 second the atoms will come to the next energy state and then uh, e2 to e1 non radiative transition you know well about this non 
ready to transition it will not produce any light here so directly it will collide with the wall and then it will come back to the ground state by colliding the wall it loses its energy and then it will come back to the ground state okay so in this way the working principle of helium neon laser takes place so watch twice or thrice so that you can understand very clearly so three transitions are very important e6 to e5 e4 to e3 and then e6 to e3 these two are producing ir region of radiation only this is producing visible range of radiation which is red color okay so next we would like to see the characteristics of helium neon laser whatever we have discussed combinedly we are going to write as the characteristics so now you see this type of the laser it is the gas laser already i said helium neon is the gas so the type of the laser is gas laser and who is the active medium here where we are going to produce the laser by using the mixture of helium neon and the ratio is 10 is to 1 okay and then who is active center here that means which is responsible for production of laser neon atoms only responsible just now we have discussed and then pumping method electrical discharge method that means excitation okay excitation by electrons so electro the fast moving electrons hit with the helium atom to go to the excited state so excitation can be done by the electrons that's what it is called electrical discharge method and then pumping source pumping sources radio frequency oscillator okay and optical resonator already i said pair of concave mirrors are used that is m1 and m2 so one mirror is par fully reflecting and another one is partially reflecting that is pair of concave mirrors we used in this case and the power output is 0.5 to 50 milliwatt power is less comparatively with the ruby laser but the nature of the output is continuous that is like this it is producing but in previous case that is for the pulsed that means for ruby laser it is the pulsed one but here we are going to get the continuous laser and the wavelength produced in this laser is 6328 angstroms which is also uh, related to the red color so red color laser is produced so in this video we have discussed what is helium neon laser introduction construction working and and then characteristics so please go through this video if you have any doubt regarding this you can ask me in the comment box so before watching this video please watch population inversion that is a three level and a four level laser system and then all the basics for the laser for better understanding so thank you everyone